All right, so now we got to think about this. It says, how would you characterize the rate of change uh, of the function on the intervals uh, negative 1 to 0 and 0 to positive 1? Okay. That's an interesting thing. So now these are x values. So what, what they want us to look at is what is the rate of change between these two and then what is the rate of change between this one and this one okay so uh, in other words when x the first part right here when x equals negative one what does y equal negative one when x equals zero what does y equal zero so there's a little bit of math to do here so we got to find the slope there and then for the second part this second part here they want us to figure out the slope between zero comma zero and one comma one in other words when x equals zero y equals zero when x equals one y equals one these intervals are x's so that's easy enough to do. I'll do the first one. So I want to know the slope between those two. So if I say x, or I'm sorry, y sub 2 minus y sub 1 all over x sub 2 minus x sub 1, then that becomes y sub 2. We'll make these, uh, we'll make these the 2s and these the 1s. This is uh, y sub 2 would be 0 minus y sub 1, which would be negative 1 all over 0 minus minus 1. So if you're curious, this would be x1, y1, and this would be x2, y2. Okay. Well, you get 1 over 1. That's the slope. It's a positive 1 over 1 or just plain old 1. Now, if I do that with uh, the next portion, I'm going to get uh, basically the same thing, except now I'm going to get 0 minus 1 and all over 0 minus 1. Oh, wait, let me think this through. This would be x1, well, let's make this x2, y2, and this would be x1, y1. Oh, okay. So then this would be negative 1 over negative 1, and that's going to be a slope of 1. And then they, so basically this is the same slope, right? Now we've got to do the same thing to compare the slope between um, negative 2 and 1 and 1 and 2. So we go back and we do the same thing. Now I'm going to kind of do the slope in my head. So when x equals 2, y1 equals negative 8, right? So I'll, I won't do it in my head. I'll just write it down. Negative 2 comma negative 8. And then I'm going to compare that to negative 1 comma negative 1, right? So I'm looking at negative 2. What's the y value? Negative 8 and this. So if I find the slope for that, that's just going to be uh, negative 8 minus minus 1 all over negative 2 minus minus 1. When you minus a minus, it's the same as a plus. And so I get 7 over 1 or 7, right? That's supposed to be a 7. And I'm running out of colors. I'm going to try to, I'll do this last one in black. So now the next two lines, I'm going to do 1 comma 1. Right, when when x equals one, y equals one. When x equals two, y equals eight. Gonna do the math on that too. I gotta scroll down because I'm running out of room. And I notice that m is equal to one uh one minus eight all over um one minus two. This would be negative seven over 
negative 1, 4, 7. So they're the same, but they're different, right? That was it. And so well, what does that mean, Mr. Adams? Well, let's look at the graph. If I look at the graph again, the slopes are basically the same. And what does that what does that mean? So if I zoom in on these points here, um, oops, I want this. If I zoom in on these points, let me put the graph in there. My 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 graph. What we figured out the slope was is that from here to here to here. Well, let me do a different color so you can see it better. This has, if I were to draw a little line from here to here, it has a slope of one. Okay. Then if I'm if I were to draw a line from here to here, I have an approximate slope of 7. In other words, this little segment has a slope of 7. This little segment has a slope of 7. Then this little segment from here to here has a slope of 1. And then this little segment here has a slope of 1. And that's all they wanted us to compare. Okay. So then it, uh, part two says a graph is said to be symmetric about the origin. The origin is called the grass point of symmetry. For every x comma y, there is a point negative x negative y on the graph. Is the graph f of x equal to x cubed symmetric about the origin? Yes. And then you just say x comma x does in fact have a negative x comma negative y. Another way that you could write that is, is that negative f of negative x is equal to negative x cubed. So it's a negative of whatever the original is. Um, part 3 says the graph g of x is a reflection of the graph f of x cubed across the y-axis while the graph h of x equals negative x cubed is a reflection of the graph um, f of x across the x-axis. If you graph g and h on a graphing calculator, what do you notice and explain why this happens? When's the bell ring? Is it 45? All right, so is it 45? It's 50. It's 50, right? Yeah, it's 50. We've got time. So I've got the original function, right? And then, hold on a second. I see your hand. Do you got to leave? or? Yeah, write it down. Um, and then g of x is in parentheses. We have negative x. So I'm going to say, um, I'll do this over here so you guys can continue to write it down, okay? I'm going to just plug these in the graphing calculator so you can write, continue to write down the question. So I'm going to put in uh, h of x. Well, I'm going to put in g of x, which is negative x in parentheses raised to the third power. And then I'm going to plug in um, negative x raised to the third power. And then graph them and see what I get. So these are the things that I'm putting in the calculator. Okay. So now I'm going to graph them. And the funny thing is, let me do this a different color. We'll do it yellow. So when I graph this, you get the blue, you get the red, you get the yellow. So the red and the yellow are pretty much the same, aren't they? Yeah. 
Why does that happen? I think the short answer is it's an odd function. I'll take a screenshot of it. So what I did is I, I graphed x cubed, and then I inverted it by saying negative x cubed, and then I did the, those are the same because it's an odd function. So let me, let me show the graph. And I'll zoom in on it and copy it. And we'll just post it right here. Did I graph it right, though? Hold on a second. I don't think I graphed it right. No, I did. Well, the blue one is the original one. So the blue one is the original function. And then when I graph G and H, they're basically the same, but they're different, right? Does that make sense? This technically is different than this, but when you graph them, they're both that yellow line. Mm -hmm. And it's because they're an odd function. Or X... X cubed is an odd function, I guess, is a better way to put it. 